Hello there! Thanks for tuning in on this video. First of all, I promise that at the end of this video, you will be able to play any jazz standard or complex chord progression, no matter how sophisticated the chord might be. Now, I think we've all been there, staring at the complex chord sheet and being at our wits end to discover that we have no clue on how to play all these extended chords. And let's be honest, it is hard to learn all these different chord shapes for all those different chord types. Not to speak of inversions like drop two voicings and so on. So how do we find our way to this dense forest of chord shapes? Well, the answer is easy and it might be a relief and an eye opener at the same time. It is time for us to learn the magic shell voicings. This, this will be your perk in playing jazz or whatever song that contains complex extended chords. So stay tuned and find out all about the shell voicings in this crystal clear QGEM tracks tutorial. So what are shell voicings? Well, shell voicings are reduced versions uh, of extended chords like C major sharp 11 or B dominant 7 sharp 5 sharp 9 or A flat minor 7 flat 13 or D dominant 7 flat 9 sus 4, to name a few. These names might give you the chills when you ask to play these in the jam session or in any situation for that matter. And you don't want to consult your book of thousand chords every time you see a chord that you're not familiar with, right? Now with these shell voicings, these simple reduced versions of complex chords, will make that you can play any jazz standard or any complex chord progression in a very straightforward yet very efficient way. Now, how do we do that? Well, we will play only the most important notes of the chords. And those are the tonic, the third, and the seventh degree. And we leave out any extension and the fifth and the altered fifth. I will show you later in the video how that really works. With shell voicings, we create eight simple chord shapes that can be used for all complex chords you come across. Just eight three note shapes and you're done. Now you can play every jazz standard uh, and every difficult piece of music regarding chords and comping with these simple three note shapes. It's almost too good to be true, right? Only it is very real and very convenient indeed. Now I know you want to dive straight into the shapes and get started. But first I'm going to show you a compressed recap of building chords and extensions. Now if you think you know enough about the subject, then feel free to skip to the next chapter with the YouTube uh, chapter select bar below in the video. If you want to study uh, chord structures in depth, then you can watch my tutorials about building chords part 1 and part 2 and come back after that. So we'll see what the major 7, minor 7, dominant 7, half diminished, diminished, augmented 7 and minor major 7 chords comprehend. I'll show you what the three essential notes are that make up those chords and why they sound as they do. After that I'll show you the actual shapes and I will divide them into uh, convenient categories so you can learn them quickly. After that we will practice some 2-5-1 progressions to get familiar with the shapes and discover the beauty of uh, the transparent sound that is inevitable when using shell voicings. It comes with a package, so to speak. Now we also take a look at the pros and cons of shell voicings. Is it all sunshine and roses? Or are there drawbacks to the system? We'll find out in this tutorial. By then the concept of shell voicings is pretty clear and we can take it to the next level. In that stage I will give you examples of playing jazz standards with shell voicings. And you can practice them with chord sheets and diagrams that I provide with this lesson. And in the last step I will show you how to easily extend shell voicings to a more complete jazz chord by adding in the 9th, the 11th and 13th. After this you may call yourself a master jazz eye instead of just a young jazz eye apprentice. There are four types of triads that produce seven types of seven chords. Those triads are the major triad that has a major third and a perfect fifth, the minor triad that has a minor third and also a perfect fifth, the diminished triad that has a minor third and a diminished fifth, and the augmented triad that has a major third and a augmented fifth. Here's the sound of the triads in a row, so you can compare them. Each triad produces one or two seventh chords by adding the seventh degree to the triad. 
Now the major triad results in a major seventh chord when the major seventh degree is stacked on top of the major triad. This chord is the tonic of the major scale and it sounds like this. The same major triad results in a dominant seventh chord when the minor seventh is added to the triad. It is a typical dominant fifth degree in a major key and often in a minor key too. This type of chord wants to resolve to the tonic and it sounds like this. The minor triad results in a minor seventh uh, chord when the minor seventh degree is stacked on top of this minor triad. The minor seventh chord is the tonic in the natural minor scale and it sounds like this. The minor triad becomes a minor major seventh chord when a major seventh is added to this minor triad. The chord has a very specific sound and is the tonic of the harmonic and melodic minor scale and it sounds like this. The diminished triad results in a half diminished chord, the minor seven flat five chord, when the minor seven is added to the triad. The chord can function as a second degree in a minor uh, two five one progression or it can be the tonic of the Locrian mode. It sounds quite dissonant. Now when stacking a diminished seventh, a double flattened seventh degree, on top of the diminished triad, it will result in a full diminished chord, which is very dissonant and serves often as a secondary dominant for minor chords, but also as a substitution for the dominant chord in minor keys. It sounds like this. The augmented triad will become a uh, augmented major seventh chord when the major seventh degree is added to the augmented triad. And this chord can be found in the melodic minor scale, for instance. It sounds like this. Now that same augmented chord results in a uh, augmented dominant seventh chord when the minor seventh is added to the augmented triad. And this chord is also called an altered chord and can serve as a dominant chord to resolve to the tonic. You'll often find this chord in a minor 2-5-1 on the fifth degree. It sounds like this. So now that you have refreshed your knowledge about the seventh chords, we will come to the core of this tutorial, the shell voicing shapes. Now we will divide the shapes in three categories. The most used shapes like major seven, dominant seven, minor seven and diminished seven. And this is everything you need for a two, five, one in either major or minor, by the way. And the shapes of the less common chords like the diminished seven, the minor major seven, the major six and minor six shapes. Although the last two are not really seven chords, they still come in handy because these chords are used on a regular basis too. Now let's look at the shapes for the major seven and dominant seven chord. Now both shapes have a root on the fifth and on the sixth string. And both have a major third. The major seven chord has a major seven degree, while the dominant seven chord has a minor seven degree. These shapes sound like this. Now the major seven shape can be a substitute for many complex chords like the major nine, major seven sharp 11, major 13, major seven sharp five, and so on and so on. The dominant seven shape is a good substitution for dominant nine, dominant sharp 11, dominant 13, dominant seven sharp five, dominant seven sharp nine, and dominant seven flat nine chords, for instance. The only thing we have to know is whether it's a major seven or a dominant seven chord to choose the right shape. Now the minor seven shapes have a root on the fifth and the sixth string. And in addition to the root, there's a minor third and a minor seventh degree. Because there's no fifth present in shell voicings, this minor seven shape can also be used for half diminished chords, also known as the minor seven uh, flat five chords. This shape is also suited for minor nine, minor 11, minor 13, minor seven sharp 11, and minor seven flat 13 chords, for instance. As long as the chord is minor, the shell voicing works. The shape sounds like this. The diminished chord has two uh, notes that sets it apart from the, uh, from the other chords. And those are the diminished fifth and the diminished seven, the double flattened seven degree. Now the fifth is omitted in shell voicing, so we can ignore this degree. What's left is a tonic on the fifth string and a tonic on the sixth string, a minor third, a diminished seven degree, and this diminished seven degree is enharmonically the same as the major sixth degree, by the way. And because of that, it could also have been a minor six shell voicing. Hmm. Interesting, don't you think? The chord sounds like this. So now let's look at the less common chords. 
There are three other chords that can be played with a shell voicing, and those are the minor major 7 chord and the minor 6 and major 6 chord. The minor major 7 chord has a root on both 5th and 6th string. It's a minor chord, so we fill in the minor 3rd degree. And the last note is the major 7th that gives the chord that special uh, sound. <laughs> Two chords that are a bit of a misfit in this concept are the major and minor 6 chords because these shapes contain a 6th degree instead of a 7th degree. Now the 6th degree is also the 13th and therefore these shapes are substitutions for the major 7 13 and minor 7 13 chords. The major 6 shell voicing has a tonic on both 5th and 6th string. It has a major 3rd and a major 6th degree. Now we could use this shell voicing for chords like major 13 and major 6 9 chords, for instance. The major 6 shell voicing sounds like this. The minor 6 shell voicing has a root on both 5th and 6th string. Uh, it is a minor chord, so it has a minor 3rd degree, and on top of that it has a major 6th degree. This chord sounds like this. So. All the chords of which uh, the chord symbols have major in the name are played with the major 7 shell voicing. Major 9, major 13, major 7 sharp 5, and major 7 sharp 11. And all the chords where the symbol has minor in it can be played with the minor 7 shell voicing. Minor 7 flat 5, minor 9, minor 11, minor 13. And all the chords with a 7, 9, 11, 13 or the word the word Alt directly behind the chord name can be played with a dominant 7 shell voicing. 7 chords, 7 sharp 9, 7 flat 9, 7 sharp 5, 7 flat 5, 11, 7 sharp 11, and uh, 7 uh, flat 13. All major 6 and major 6 9 chords can be played with the major 6 shell voicing. And all minor and minor uh, 6 9 chords can be played with the minor 6 shell voicing. And the diminished chord and the minor major 7 chords speak for themselves. Play a diminished 7 shell voicing over any diminished 7 chord and a minor major shell voicing over the minor major 7 and minor major 9 chord. The 2 5 1 in major and minor are the most important building blocks in music that rely on functional harmony. And that is because this progression is strongly based upon the 5 1 relationship between chords. It is used extensively in jazz, but you'll see it in other styles too. There are two variations of the 2-5-1, the major and the minor 2-5-1. Now the major 2-5-1 comes from the major scale or Ionian mode as it's called. And if you're watching this video, you most likely know this scale and the chords that are derived from this scale. The first degree is the tonic and it's often played as a major 7 chord or an extended version like a major 9 or even a major 13 chord. The second degree is a minor chord and it's most often played as a minor 7 or minor 9 chord. The fifth degree is uh, a dominant chord which means it's a major chord with a minor 7th degree. Now this minor 7 forms an unstable tritone with the major 3rd of this chord. And this makes that the 5th degree wants to resolve to the tonic. And it sounds like this when using only shell voicings. But the 251 in major could also look like this. Now this looks intimidating at first, but when using the shell voicings it becomes easy to grasp the real character of this 251, even if a chord is notated with one or two extensions. Now we use the minor 6 shell voicing for the D minor 6 9 chord, and for the other two chords uh, we use a dominant 7 and major 7 shell voicing like this. Now in the next example I'll show you a progression uh, that is a combination of uh, 2 times a 2-5-1 cadence. Look at the progression, pause the video and try to play the progression in shell voicings. Then listen to the result and see if you had it right. Here's the example. The 
251 in minor uh, comes from the natural minor scale or Aeolian mode, as it's often called. The first degree, the tonic of the scale is a minor 7 chord, or an extended version of the chord like a minor 9 or minor 11 chord. We'll play a minor 7 shell voicing all together. Second degree is a half diminished chord in a minor key. For this chord, we'll, uh, we'll use also a minor 7 shell voicing because the diminished fifth is not present in our minor 7 shell voicing shape. The fifth degree is a dominant 7 chord, but it is often substituted for an altered chord like a dominant 7 sharp 5 chord. Altered or not, we'll play a simple dominant 7 shell voicing for both variants. So what would you do when you see this progression? Pause the video and think about what shell voicings you would use. Then watch the example to see if you had it right. Here's the example. Before we go to the next steps, I want to discuss the pros and cons of shell voicings, because I can imagine that you have wondered about that. Now, as with everything in life, there are advantages and disadvantages, and it's not different with this system. For me personally, there are more pros than cons. First of all, this system is not a replacement of some kind for the real jazz chords. Sure, it looks like a dummy-proof system at first, but be aware that this system is used by the pros very frequently, and that has its reasons. Now, one of the motivations to use such a system is uh, that these three-note chords give a lot of headroom and openness for other instruments and vocals. The shapes are played in the lower region of the frequency spectrum, leaving the upper frequency region alone, so other instruments can uh, occupy that higher range. So shell voicings create room and transparency. Also because they are not as defined uh, in sound as chords with all those higher extensions. Now another reason this system has its benefits is, uh, is that the, the shapes are easy expandable to more complex chords by adding just one note. Um, you could see this shell voicing as a foundation for, for the higher extended chord shapes. Now, not only will this make it, makes it easier for you to learn these complex chords in a later stadium, but it also helps you to understand and comprehend chord progressions in a structural way. Now, I'm talking about leading tones and common tones in chord changes, for instance. Those are easier to discover in barebone shell voicings than in uh, complex extended chords. Now, besides of, uh, besides of all this, the shell voicings are a great tool for musicians to easily play complex chord progressions without having to make a heavy study of jazz chords first. With shell voicings, you have the opportunity to slide gradually into the world of jazz chords. And you may ask yourself, aren't there any cons to this system? And the answer is yes, there is one disadvantage. And that is that the chords are not quite the sound as the composer meant to be. Because of the missing fifth, you can't really hear if the chord is diminished or augmented. And also the colorful extensions like the 9th, the 11th and 13th are simply not present in the shell voicing. Now, my conclusion is that shell voicings have a lot more advantages than disadvantages. Now we start with a fairly simple jazz standard, the blue bossa. The full chords, with all the extensions and alterations, are written along the shell voicings. After this, download the chord sheets without the shell voicing diagrams from my Patreon page, so you can practice yourself. Now, the Blue Bossa is one of the more straightforward uh, jazz standards regarding chord changes. The key is C minor, and the song modulates briefly to D flat major. Here is Blue Bossa played in shell voicings. Now the second, more complex jazz standard is the song One Out Samba by Antonio Carlos Jobim. More chords and faster changes. As the title reveals, the 
Chord progression is built around one single melody note. And the harmony in this song is very clever composed. The key is B flat and modulates to different keys. The last complex jazz standard is All the Things You Are. This complex jazz standard was written by Jerome Kernant and the lyrics were written by Oscar Hammerstein. Now the key is uh, A flat uh, major, but the song modulates to C major, G major, E major, and back to A flat major again. In jazz and blues, it's common practice to add a chord that is a semitone higher or lower just before the main chord. Now, shell voicings in particular lend themselves very well for this way of playing. It's very easy to do and it adds rhythmic interest to your sound. Just that little extra is often in the details. These chords are most often played on the upbeat, like the fourth beat. <laughs> Shell voicings uh, are also very convenient shapes for playing tritone substitutions. Whenever a dominant 7 chord or an extended version of the dominant 7 chord passes you by, you can substitute this for uh, the dominant chord that is a tritone higher or lower than the root of the original dominant 7 chord. So you could substitute the G dominant 7 chord for the D flat dominant 7 chord, like this. <laughs> Now, if you want to know more uh, about the tritone substitutions, then watch my dedicated video about this subject. Now, if we apply these two techniques, the chromatic chord on the fourth beat and the tritone substitution uh, over the blue bossa, then we'll get something like this. Now that we know all the ins and outs of the shell voicing concept, there's just one thing I'd like to show you. And that is adding extensions to the shell voicings. Now we could use the shell voicing shape as a foundation, in particular for the 9, 11 and 13 chords. Some shapes will be more convenient for adding a 9th, and for some it's easier to add the 11th and 13th. Now if we look at the shapes that have the root on the 5th string, we see that the 9th is in a perfect position to be added to the shell voicing shape. We can make a major 9, a minor 9, 
and a dominant 9 chord. The shapes with the root on the 6th string are more suited for the 11th and 13th as an extension. Both extensions lie on the adjacent 2nd adjacent string. Now we can make a major 7 sharp 11 chord, a major 13 chord, a minor 11 chord, a minor 13 chord, a dominant sharp 11 chord, and a dominant 13 chord. Now it's not that you should do this to replace the shell voicings, because shell voicings are meant to be bare bone. It's just to see how building chords works, and maybe this helps you to make the step to the full extended jazz chords. I think we can all agree on the fact that shell voicings can help an intermediate guitarist play jazz standards and complex chord progressions with the bare bone shell voicings. The sound of the shell voicings is open and transparent, and leaves headroom for other instruments, vocals and improvisations. Shell voicings are not jazz chords for dummies, because many top uh, jazz players use them all the time, of course in conjunction with the full extended chords. Now shell voicings can help you understand the relationship between chords and provides a foundation for the extended chords. Now best thing to practice is playing these shell voicings over jazz standards, but you can use these shell voicings in any style, not only in jazz. What about this famous Michael Jackson song, played only with shell voicings? Well, I hope this was crystal clear again. Subscribe if you want more of this and consider to be my patron to receive extra material like backing tracks and uh, free ebooks. I say greets from the Netherlands. Bye.